Now, we've got freelance cricket journalist and commentator Ken Bolland joining us all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you for joining us, Ken. And uh, not such a good day to talk uh, cricket in South Africa. Hi, Doko. No, it, it, it's obviously very disappointing. Um, I think first up, you must just say, though, what a top performance by New Zealand, though. Um, you know, all credit to them. The way they came out with the bat, you know, getting 158 in a final um, on that particular surface was was really a, a very good total by them. South Africa's bowling just wasn't quite as good as it's been previously in the tournament, and they, and they were a bit scrappy in the field. And uh, then Laura Volfart and Tasman Brits, the, the leading run scorers in the World Cup, gave South Africa another good start. Uh, but once they got out, then the rest crumbled uh, pretty easily against a, an excellent New Zealand attack. And uh, a lot of credit, actually, I think, needs to go to Leo Tahu, um, because it was her over uh, the eighth over of the innings which I think really was a turning point. She didn't get a wicket, um, but she only conceded one run. And you could just see Laura Volfart at the other end was, was getting a bit anxious. And first ball of the next over, tried to hit over the infield uh, and was uh, caught in the covers of Amelia Kerr. And uh, from then, it was pretty much just one-way traffic. You know, talking about um, the game now, both teams, actually, they have a story. They have a history uh, looking at uh, New Zealand and South Africa. They've both struggled in the finals of these tournaments. And uh, I think luck had to shine more for New Zealand. South Africa have battled, uh, I think they've faced three consecutive finals and they've not been able to clinch, uh, put their hands on the title yet. Yeah, of course, it's a long standing uh, issue with the South African men's team. Uh, their records at, at World Cups, lots of disappointment, lots of uh, uh, knockout defeats in, in weird and not so wonderful ways. Um, look, it, it was new ground for the men's side to make the, the T20 World Cup final earlier this year. So you could say there was progress on that front. Uh, and I think also for the women, you know, to make two World Cup finals in a row, um, they deserve credit for that. You know, they're generally not one of the big three sides. There's always England, Australia, India have been dominating um, you know, New Zealand, it, it's great that they're back on top of world cricket because they were one of the top three sides. Uh, you know, you mentioned the 2009-2010 finals they played in. So, you know, back then they were one of the real, real top sides and, and have been through a tough patch. But, yeah, South Africa's wait for a, a cricket World Cup title, either the men or the ladies, continues. Mm. Right. I mean, lastly, should we really blame this on uh, experience? Uh, I think because uh, the other guys seem to have more firepower when it comes to these uh, sports and also consistency matters a lot. A lot. Should we blame this on uh, inexperience from the other teams, especially maybe the, uh, the South Africans? No, I, I don't think we can use that uh, as an excuse. You know, the New Zealand side had a lot of young players in it as well. Um, obviously, playing around that senior experience core of Susie Bates, Amelia Kerr, Sophie Devine, Leah Tohu. But they had some very young players as well who really stood up in that final. You know, South Africa do have experienced commanders like Laura Volfart, Tasman Brits, Marazan Cup, uh, Ayabonga Kaka. So, no, I don't think inexperience is, is an excuse. I, I just think South Africa didn't bring their best game uh, to the final, which was most unfortunate. All right, we'll be looking forward to South Africa putting their hands on the T20 Women's World Cup sometime very, very soon. And uh, it was quite a disappoint disappointing one, heartbreaking for the South Africans as well. But of course, they did give their best in that one. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, Ken Borland. Thanks very much, Rudokha.